guys, it's Miss Cassava. Today's book, Verdi, is a book about a baby snake for all my snake fans. And this baby snake does not want to grow up because that means slowing down and molting or shedding his beautiful bright yellow snake skin. You see, Verdi is a green tree python and green tree pythons are born yellow and only turn green after shedding their skin a few times or what scientists call molting. Let's see the way Verdi tries not to turn green. He wants to stay yellow. Verdi by Janelle Cannon. Read by Miss Cassava. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves, she called to her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Verdi dawdled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Ferdy ventured into the treetops to look for them. The pictures in this book are great. They look realistic. <clears throat> Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verdi peered at their droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare, chided Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. Ugh, it's taken nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. I surely do like lizards, but they don't like me. Why don't lizards like you? asked Verdi. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whinnied Aggie, if I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi tapped a tune with his tail while he waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi, it makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. That means wiggling. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them, and he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verdi slipped away. He finds another green old snake. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired, Dozer growled. Do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not only lazy and boring, they were rude. They hurt his feelings a little bit. He wants to have fun. Here he is grabbing onto a branch. What's going to happen? At the top of a very tall tree, Ferdy gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I'll never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. And flew into the sky. Whee! From a distance, the greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. There he is flying through the sky. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles moaned. He may not live to turn green. But one day... Ferdy's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green strip stretching along his whole body. Cack, he gasped. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle, and I'm still turning green. 
he raced down to the river, grabbing up a mouthful of rough leaves. He's trying not to grow green. He's rubbing the leaves, trying to get the green off. Ferdy flung himself into the water. If I can't run the screen off, I'll scrub it off, he thought. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder, cruising the murky depths. Mmm, the old fish hummed. Lunch. He's cruising the murky depths. A bottom feeder is like a catfish. He sees him splashing up there. He's going to try to eat him. Before the fish could haul Verdi under, Verdi, the frightened snake, bit him on the nose. Ah, foo! With a blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Verdi into the air. Slapping onto the soggy shore, Verdi skidded out of reach. Phew! Woo, that was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. Sure beats being green. He left the mud on. But... The soft brown muck dried into a hard gray shell, and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As each piece fell away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Verdi. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like all the old greens. He looked up in the sky, where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the tree. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight. Sure, the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to earth. Whippity whap, flip flap, wham! Plummeting through the trees, Verdi landed in a crooked sprawl across a log on the forest floor. He couldn't move. Help! He croaked. As usual, the greens had been watching Verdi's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this, Umble said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed. Lucky thing is he's still got two good eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. And there's a black and white picture of the greens helping Verdi. The pictures are my favorite part for sure. Oh, is he going to get well? Let's see. Neatly splintered to a branch. Splinted. Neatly splinted to a branch. Verdi had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the florist floor, Ribbon asked? Quick as lightning, answered Aggie, and I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller then, you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Umbles bragged. Wild boars were no match for me. Verdi was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then old Umbles nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life. The greens rambled on about their days of glory and Verdi settled onto his branch. One afternoon, a 
Bumble said, looks like you're ready to go again. He carefully untied Verdi from the branch. You are welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. The three greens slipped quietly back into the forest. Verdi wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go, so he just stretched and stayed until the sun went down and he listened to the forest come alive. He's camouflaged. Time passed. The sun and the moon took turns in the sky. Verdi marveled as the moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched patiently as it grew round again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Verdi became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures walked right by without seeing him. One fine morning, Verdi basked in the sunshine. Two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of that old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The others snickered. <laughs> I seriously doubt it. They're just like I used to be, thought Verdi. And now I'm what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How'd you like to climb trees with me, he asked. With you? The yellows were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Ferdy replied, though he was a little worried about putting his eye out. <clears throat> with practice, the three snakes performed a perfect triple figure eight. Leaping and looping with his little striped friends, Ferdy laughed. I may be big and green, but I'm still me. Thanks for listening, guys, to Birdie. See you next time.